It's like saying, no, this month you're not going to get to bleed a pint of blood out of me. I'm keeping all my blood. And for anybody who's an athlete, you just consider whether or not you would pre prefer to be an athlete not getting bled to death or whether you would allow some politician to keep sucking a pint of your blood out of your body whenever they want. It's just really horrific performance <laughs> problem. Michael Saylor, U.S. Senator Ted Cruz, CEO of Custodia Bank, Caitlin Long, Senator Cynthia Lummies, and Peter St. Ange all took part in a panel discussion at the Heritage Foundation. The American Heritage Foundation is a leading conservative think tank. It deals with almost all issues that play a role in American society, including the crypto industry. According to Heritage Foundation President Kevin Roberts, Bitcoin even able to financially protect U.S. citizens. Bitcoin can protect Americans because it cannot be created out of nothing, said Kevin Roberts, president of the Heritage Foundation. He spoke at the Heritage Foundation's discussion titled Bitcoin and the American Experiment. Bitcoin is the single most destructive invention in a positive sense, Roberts said in his debut speech. The panelists explored Bitcoin's past, present, and future in America. Cynthia Lummies discussed a pro-crypto regulatory framework that she feels will provide order to the industry while allowing innovation to flourish. The crypto space is really great, according to Lummies. She went on to depict Bitcoin as, the law will be a lengthy document that explains the many components of crypto assets and commodities. The American dream is all about property rights, sovereignty, and independence, Saylor said of Bitcoin's chances. Then you can take your life arising Phoenix savings, energy, and economy to cyberspace. This video promises to be very exciting and insightful as Michael Saylor and Senator Cynthia Lummies discusses Bitcoin and why the average person cannot afford to miss out on Bitcoin. We want to use this opportunity to thank all our viewers and subscribers. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Why should regular Americans care about Bitcoin? Well, uh, the nation was founded by people that um, were looking for freedom and property rights, and that's why they left Europe. At, at one point, at one, my family came from Lucerne, Switzerland. They were Palatines, and I, I think at some point Protestants in Catholic Europe couldn't own a job or own property or have a job, and so they came to America. And then, of course, the opposite is a bunch of Catholics from Northern Europe had to come to America for the opposite reason. So the American dream was always go west, get property, live your life, live happily ever after. And after we all got here to Virginia, if we were Protestant, or to Maryland, if we were Catholic, or to <laughs> Pennsylvania, if we were neither, but Quaker. <laughs> after we got here and it got too crowded, everybody went west again, right? To the Great West, to Wyoming, and they wanted land. And now the world is just full of people, and you can't go west anymore, so, and, and we can't really all go to outer space because space travel is too expensive. So where we can go is we can go to cyberspace. And what if you want, or if what you want is the American dream, you want property rights and freedom and sovereignty, then you can move your life force, your life savings, your economic energy, your property into cyberspace where you might have the hope for freedom and sovereignty and, and truth and, and a decent life. And that's the American dream. Uh, since the abdication of the gold standard in the 1970s, the dollar has had no hard anchor against inflation. Can Bitcoin help the U.S. return to that era of sound money? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Uh, I get more? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think uh, once you, if you think about money as economic energy and you think about a currency as the fluid through which the energy moves, then gold, if gold was your money, and if the gold supply is expanding at 2% a year, then that means the half-life of the energy in gold or the half-life of gold money is about 35 years. Uh, when that inflation rate drops to 1% a year, if you could do that, the half-life becomes 70 years. But the ha in fact, the, the long-term inflation rate of Bitcoin is zero. So the half-life of, of money in Bitcoin is infinite. It's immortal. It's, it's not twice as good as gold. It's a million times better than gold. And, uh, and ultimately, this is all about fixing the energy balance in the civilization. You know, if, a, if you had a family of athletes and every month a bureaucrat showed up and, and they took a pint of blood from everybody in your family and then you went out and you ran marathons, you wouldn't do it so well. And if they kept coming every single month, that would be bad. And if they kept coming every week, that would be really bad. In fact, that's what inflation is. We're just sucking the oxygen out of your blood, except inflation is sucking the energy out of the currency. And uh, so if you, 
we sort of had semi-hard money, but the reason that the gold standard worked was the economy grew 2% a year and gold inflated at 2% a year and everything kind of stayed constant. If you had really hard money and you grew, you grew the money supply 0% a year and the economy grew 2% a year, means everything you want would get 2% cheaper every year of your life and you could literally save money and wait and in 10 years you could buy much, much more with the same money. So Bitcoin solves the problem theoretically in the right fashion. And if the civilization starts to adopt it as a primary treasury reserve asset, it's like saying, no, this month you're not going to get to bleed a pint of blood out of me. I'm keeping all my blood. And for anybody who's an athlete, you just consider whether or not you would pref prefer to be an athlete not getting bled to death or whether you would allow some politician to keep sucking a pint of your blood out of your body whenever they want. It's just really horrific performance <laughs> problem. We've got some super metaphors going here tonight. I appreciate it. I love the way engineers speak about Bitcoin. Michael's got such a terrific perspective. Senator Cynthia Lummies, an American attorney and politician serving as the junior United States senator from Wyoming, also shared her thought on Bitcoin and why she believes that Bitcoin is the only way to protect against inflation and excessive printing of money by the government. She released a statement in December to criticize Joe Biden and his actions which have worsened the living standard of Americans. From an unnecessary stimulus at the start of the year to extra unemployment checks and vaccine mandates, this administration is doing the very opposite of what we should be doing to bring the economy back in a responsible manner. Instead, soaring gas prices and empty shelves are the result, she said. Uh, Senator Lemus, uh, I'd like to ask you another question. Uh, according to many polls, uh, inflation is the biggest issue for Americans today. And by the way, that's cross-party, uh, which is very rare for everybody to be afraid of the same thing. At this, uh, How do you see Bitcoin fitting into the inflation discussion? Well, the great thing about Bitcoin is it's limited supply. There will only be 20 million Bitcoin ever mined. Every four years, they cut the number of Bitcoin being mined in half. Uh, the algorithms get more and more difficult to solve. Uh, and um, every 10 minutes, there's a few more uh, fractions of a Bitcoin mined. So it's on a steady path. Nothing about fiat currency is on a steady path. The government can print more money willy-nilly. And we do. As you know, when I first arrived uh, in the U.S. House of Representatives, uh, January of 2009, we just crossed the threshold between uh, 9 and 10 trillion in national debt. And now we're over 30 trillion in, in, in national debt. And there's no discussion in the U.S. House or the U.S. Senate about repurposing other money uh, to meet the needs of today. For example, uh, the bill that we just passed last week, uh, sending uh, $40 uh, billion dollars more to Ukraine, um, that was not money that was repurposed from uh, excess COVID money that hasn't been spent uh, or coming from another source that hasn't been spent. It's new money. It's new money being printed. And we're doing that every week with every bill. Uh, because of that, we're guaranteeing that the U.S. dollar uh, is going to uh, be everywhere to try and solve every problem and hold less and less value while it's doing it. So the fact that Bitcoin portfolio is immune from all of that makes it, uh, as Michael Saylor just said, uh, a million times uh, more stable. No one controls the levers of Bitcoin. Uh, it is going to play out mathematically exactly how it was designed in the white paper. And it's predictable. Nothing about what the Congress is doing is predictable, except for the fact that we're going to print more money than we take in. Our value, our dollar is going to be worth less and less all the time, and that nobody cares. 
neither party. Both parties are responsible for this. Ted Cruz was also a keynote speaker at the event and lauded Bitcoin as a very extraordinary innovation. With the introduction of Bitcoin, the senator claimed that money no longer had to be a government monopoly. Now everyone has access to money thanks to blockchains and distributed ledgers, stated U.S. Senator Ted Cruz. The panel debate occurred during the U.S. government's growing hostility toward digital assets. U.S. President Joe Biden signed an executive order earlier this year directing government agencies to develop new cryptocurrency regulations. As more investors and even politicians continue to adopt and believe in the potential of Bitcoin, we can confidently say that it's just a matter of time before crypto go fully mainstream, when everyone, including boomers, will hold crypto as part of their portfolio. This will definitely happen and will take Bitcoin price to a new all-time high and maybe possibly a million dollars per coin within a few years. Thanks for watching. Till our next video, please stay savvy.